the mark. Yeah, for starting. Those. Oh, we're we're live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. We are from Rovio. Uh, we'll be telling you about what we have been doing and uh, where Angry Birds brand is going. My name is Sardar Soganja. I'm web games manager for the company. All right, and hi, um, I'm Ramin Darbiha. First of all, uh, great to be here. Thanks for uh, those who could make it right after the old school compo. Uh, I know a lot of people come here just for that stuff, so uh, thanks for those who, who could make it back here. Uh, sorry for being late. Uh, we had a few technical things to deal with, uh, but we're ready. So uh, my name is Ramin Darbiha, and I'm a product manager at Rovio. Uh, and we'd like to share with you basically a sneak peek of, of how we're thinking, what we're working on, how we see the future at Rovio, a little bit of output and, and views on our technology, and, and of course connect with the fans here because when, when we come out of the office it's always nice to uh, get some interaction there. So I, I hope to get some of that later on. So um, we'll start with a small overview. Uh, just to get everyone up to speed. Uh, I know you've probably heard, many of you have heard the Angry Birds story a lot. Uh, but assembly for us is a very, very important event. Okay, it's not a LAN party, it's not just a demo party, it's the actual birthplace of Rovio. So for us, it's a big deal. Uh, Rovio started at, fr from the game dev compo of assembly 2003. So as these three guys were students at the time, and felt like doing one of the entries that, well, just like the guys doing this year, their entries, and I hope you try them, uh, decided to create a game. And it turned out it was the first multiplayer game on mobile. Won the game, then Compo decided to start something. Um, we've worked on several games since. Um, and to be honest, between 2003 and 2009 hasn't always been great. Uh, I guess you've heard that story as well. Uh, so a lot of you know that Angry Birds is not our first game. I know there's, there's been a lot of comments about, you know, instant success and being lucky. Well, not really, since there were 51 games before that. Um, so there's a long history of, of learning through, through pain, <coughs> learning to design good games, learning to design with other tools, creating better tools and all that, that was uh, during these six years. Uh, so we made games on Java, we made games on, on Symbian, we made games on Engage. All sorts of different platforms, various publishers, some contract work, some independent work. And there was a decision to start focusing fully on smartphones in 2009. Which leads us to, of course, Angry Birds. So, up. Angry Birds was released in late 2009, so that's December 2009. Uh, and the idea was to create something that would be tailored specifically for the new kinds of phones. Of course, iPhone came out way before that, but there weren't really games that were so much focused on being a touchscreen smartphone experience. So the idea was, like, let's get started with something like that and start it with something fresh. Angry Birds hit number one in the App Store in, was it February 2009? Uh, 2010, sorry. And uh, from then, at the time, we weren't exactly sure how it was going to perform. And, and um, eventually, uh, remained in the top five, started growing in the other apps, in the other app stores, the other platforms, uh, became top on Android. Uh, that was in September, yeah. September 2010. Uh, and the other platforms, such as Windows Phone 7, Symbian, of his store, etc. And now we are at the state of being three games that are constantly on the top of every app store they've launched at so, uh, systematically since 2009. So that is, of course, Angry Birds Seasons and Angry Birds Rio as well. So, reaching the end of the overview, of course, uh, we are now a game that's reached a significant number of platforms with three games consistent level of quality, and reached in total 300 million people, or downloads. And that's where we're standing now with Angry Birds. So the thing is that during the past few months and during the past year, there's been an evolution of, of not just Angry Birds being the game anymore, but becoming something more. 
And uh, a lot of people have been curious about that. So one thing we've realized, for example, in going abroad and the different markets is that people don't necessarily interact most with the game, but they love the characters. The Angry Birds characters are very easy to recognize. They're very strong. The kids love them. The adults love them. They're very international. They're popular in Asia. They're popular in the US. There hasn't been any tweaks in the made to go in these different markets. There's always been these different stories of like, if you want to go to China, you need to have Chinese characters. If you want to go in the US, you need to have you know, some apple pie and baseball or something. We didn't have to do that, luckily. The boys like the birds because they're angry. The girls like the, the, the birds because they're cute. So. There's been this uh, little magic, basically, in creating the characters. And we've been expanding on the brand. So not so much the game anymore, as opposed to creating an IP. The company <coughs> just recently was renamed to Rovio Entertainment, not Rovio Mobile anymore. And that translates with the transition that we're going for now. So we are growing in merchandising. So our toys and our t-shirts, etc., are getting quite popular. Uh, the whole licensing angle, of course, of Rovio is, has been growing a lot, too, as a consequence. We have a publishing angle that's growing very much. Uh, so we're starting to do cookbooks. That was something quite unexpected. Uh, and educational books and, and other publishing, comics, etc., are coming. And the animation stuff is also a strong point. Uh, we've just bought an animation studio. We're working on a movie. We're working on several animations, etc. So. What we'd like to talk about is, is about how do we remain a game company with people who love games and a game that a lot of people love on a lot of platforms while becoming a company like this. And one of the initiatives I'm working on, for example, at the moment is Angry Bears Magic. So uh, we have several initiatives going on at Rovio at the moment. Uh, one of them is Angry Birds Magic, of which I am the product manager. Magic is a platform that connects the physical world with Angry Birds. Now, we see a lot of companies out there that have really great games, but people don't necessarily recognize the characters. Their characters are not necessarily in the stores out there. Um, kids of every age don't necessarily like to interact with them. And their reach is not necessarily international. Now, this is not the case for us. Um, so what we're doing with Magic is trying to leverage that, turning the real world into a playground for Angry Birds, basically. Uh, making it a platform for people to play. So we've recently revealed uh, the first version of Magic launched on the Nook tablet. Uh, the Nook tablet is an ebook reader that is well, basically like the Amazon Kindle uh, from Barts and Noble. Um, and on the Nook tablet, if you enter Barts and Noble, which is a magic place, uh, you will get the Mighty Eagle for free. So what we're doing is basically we're having these magic places that people can walk to with the game, and without doing anything, without checking in, without any sort of interaction in the game, they receive new rewards in the game. So we're testing that ground into seeing like other places that people prefer to go to, other new types of interaction we can create when people are somewhere, um, <coughs> etc. We are creating, we're leveraging also not just the location as a technology, we're looking into interacting with products. Of course, we have a lot of really great toys that are out there and people like to use, but there's also a lot of piracy. So how do we go against that? Well, one of the possibilities around that is creating magic toys, making it possible for physical objects to have an interaction with Angry Birds. So here, there's this new technology called NFC, which stands for Near Field Communication which is a new wireless standard, basically, which enables new kinds of phones to uh, have some connection with NFC tags, stickers. So they can be ten, like normal stickers. They cost 10 cents. You can put them on anything and make them interactive with a mobile device. <coughs> of course, that's interesting because that enables the Internet of Things. And this means we can start making anything interactive and, and leveraging the game. So we have other things coming with uh, social angles uh, that Serdar is going to talk about now, uh, and, and how we create new types of interactions with, with places, people, and products. Uh, but the goal here is to try to get you to understand that how do you go next step from being a big game to creating an experience that sustains and, and goes further in terms of technology and experience. So Serdar. 
Okay, so <clears throat> like Ramin mentioned, uh, maybe half of our operations are now not really games anymore. Uh, we are extending. But then again, Robbie has lots of guys like me, and uh, we know games best. We, I don't think we know anything else. And I will tell you more about what Robbie is actually doing with the games. <coughs> uh, we are number one on mobile platforms. I think that's a fact. We don't need to uh, convince you on that. But um, now we actually want to go to every other digital platform, which we believe it makes sense for Angry Birds brand to appear, and where we can actually bring uh, a high quality user experience on them. <coughs> and uh, the next big target on our roadmap at the moment is the web platforms, and that's what I'm responsible with. <coughs> uh, the Robio web game development, it's a, it's a new thing for us, first of all. Uh, we just started in 2010 autumn with a quite a small team and uh, it was more of a long pre-production in the beginning. We wanted to understand, we wanted to research and identify what it means to have Angry Birds on the web. Like, uh, it's on two different aspects especially. One of them is design aspect, and the other one is the technology. And when we started doing that, on contrary, even though uh, we tried to keep it uh, low, there was already lots of hype about it. Uh, people were already asking, like, hey, when are you going to be on Facebook? Uh, like, when we can play your Flash version? Even though we weren't talking about it, even be right after we started, people were asking for it. So we know that, that we are on, the, we're on something good. Like, that's, people are looking for that. People are expecting it to happen. So that actually just motivated us. So, uh, like I said, we tried to separate it into two sections. One, like, the design of it and the technology part. And for the design, the... Our like, primary question was why someone should play Angry Birds on web? I mean, to be honest, this is a game which was designed perfectly for mobile devices. And uh, some of its core strengths, such as touchscreen, using touchscreen efficiently, uh, like being, uh, <coughs> having a very simple and intuitive user interface, like the uh, possibility to start the game in a matter of seconds, and uh, having like really short time game sessions. Like these are all uh, things which really works great on mobile, but they are not maybe uh, fully uh, applicable on web. Like we, don't, we wouldn't want to rely just on these, but we don't want to make an application which relies on just touch screen when you go web. And uh, we still had to bring a new, like a strong replay value. And uh, then we had to also challenge the fact that when you play the game on a smartphone, we have users' full attention. Even if it's a very short time period, still we have the users' full attention. There's no multitasking, but when you're playing on web, you have all sorts of different alternatives and distractions. So we had to change the way we look at that a bit. So that was kind of our uh, on high-level design challenge. Like We wanted to make this a bit different, hopefully a bit better. And uh, yeah, it was, it's not easy. Let, let, me let me tell you that. It's not really easy. But yet, we decided that if we are doing this, this has to be a better experience. It, we have to enhance this. And, uh, and, of, and of course, like we, what we are trying to do is that we try to bring in certain features, certain capabilities which are uh, web-oriented that we maybe couldn't do efficiently on mobile to cover up for certain parts that we may fall back. And of course, for starters, like, OK, when we go on web, what we have? We have a bigger screen. We have a full-blown connectivity. That's like a, one of the biggest area. And we can also access all sorts of other web services, which makes sense to uh, add on the top of the Angry Birds. And when you do that, the alternatives and the options are uh, like, basically, there is no limit anymore. And then, of course, uh, there's this whole social interaction. Like Nowadays, when you think about, if you say that I'm playing a game on internet, that actually means you're playing a game with your friends. You're you're, a, you're having social interaction, you're sharing your game content, you're being challenging with your friends, and that's what we want to bring into the Angry Birds. And when we do, if we do that in the right way, we believe we can actually create an Angry Birds community on the web, and that's what we, where we want to go. But the other thing, which is <coughs> last but not least for us, is reaching more fans. Because like, uh, Angry Birds plays great on the smartphones, tablets, and uh, some high-level, high-end devices. But 
still compared to web, it's very small amount. Like web is still the wi most widely used digital platform at the moment. And we are very excited with the opportunity that, hey, actually, we can now take our brand to a new platform where most of the people who maybe heard about the game, maybe they've seen the characters, but they never had a chance to play on their own. And now we can reach all of those people. And yet, again, the expectations are very high because we have been number one for the last 18 months on every single chart we appeared. And if you are coming to web with our brand, people are expecting high quality, and people expect us to be there again, and we want to be there again. So that's how we do our design, basically, on website. And to be able to do what we want to do on design, then we have the second aspect of it, is the technology. Rovio is a company, uh, like Ramin mentioned, has several years of experience in mobile development, and we have so many strong, uh, talented people know how to do it very well, and we have lots of internal tools. So we know how to make a mobile game in an efficient way. But uh, when we started the web development, to be honest, it was completely new thing for, for us. Like We had a brand, we had some ideas, but we didn't know exactly how we should do it. One thing we know that we can't compromise it. Like However we do it, it has to be good. And, uh, <clears throat> and it had to, it had, it had to uh, play and feel as smooth as possible it can be on that particular platform. And because uh, in the end of the day, that's what our fans are expecting. And uh, so we started to think about how we can address that. So how we can, what kind of technology solutions we should apply so uh, we can have the Angry Birds experience, which works on mobile, bring it to the web, and it will be still better. And uh, quickly we realized that when we want, uh, Actually, most of the things we want to do is not just in what about anymore the game itself, but there are lots of additional services we have to build around that so that we can take full advantage of the web platform. And uh, to be able to do that, we have been investigating and trying the latest technologies to be able to get the best possible outcome. And, uh, and for that, and uh, thanks to the strong brand, we actually had the luxury to be in contact and cooperate and work with the industry leaders, uh, both for the development and the distribution, so that we, can, we could find a way to make the best solution for Angry Birds. Uh, one of the main question or challenge for us to decide, which is the most, actually quite a popular uh, discussion nowadays, is okay, should we use Flash or should we use HTML5? Uh, like from our point of view, both has ups and downs. Like there are reasons to use both of them, but uh, and we decided that okay, we will give them a fair chance. We will study both of them. We will research both of them and understand which one actually fits to us better. And Shit. and we started with Flash. I mean, why we started with Flash? Because it's a proven technology for web games. It's well documented. It's easy to use, and uh, there are lots of people out there who knows how to use Flash. And uh, another thing which we really needed was are the em embedding capabilities of the Flash. And uh, that's why it was easy decision for us. But then again, if you think about the Flash, if it's not a native development platform. And because of that, it's not the fastest solution. And that's quite important for us as well, for the Angry Birds game. For it's, uh, it's an essential thing for the experience that it has to be fast. And we need our hardware access. And then again, uh, I won't give you the names, but you know some of the operating systems are not supporting Flash, and I don't think they will be supporting Flash in the near future. Actually, it's in the slide, the name, so. <laughs> and uh, as we move forward, then we said, OK, we have to look on HTML5 a bit more seriously than we originally thought. And then we start investigating on that. And OK, immediately, when you work, start working on HTML5, you feel it's growing rapidly, like every day. It's, it's getting better and better. It's more organized. And it's, after all, a standard platform. And uh, it's backed up by the in industry pioneers. And it's going to be portable. So we immediately felt comfortable and good about working with that. And again, uh, technically, it's fast because it has a hardware acceleration. And it can support WebGL. And on top of this, it's new and fresh things. So when you do something with HTML5, it, it creates a hype. Like People talk about it. People are interested. So we enjoyed working on HTML5. But then again, on the downside, uh, in contrary to Flash, HTML5 is not really used heavily yet for game development, so it's not really proven. 
And uh, not everything actually works as you would expect it to work, at least not yet. And OK, the, another thing is it requires modern browsers to work. So for example, now we are thinking that maybe we want to be an Asian, Asian market. And we know that they don't have all the latest browsers there. And uh, again, the other thing is that there are actually not that many people who know how to develop HTML5 games. So if you want to grow our team, it's actually going to be a bit harder for us. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, the thing is like, OK, so what was the solution for you? Which one we picked in the end and what we were planning to do? Well, we actually picked both of them. We decided that we don't want to isolate any of our fans. And based on our research and uh, evaluations, we realized that for some people, their machines, their configurations, the country they are located in, it's flash is still for so several years to come is the better solution. And then again, for uh, certain people, and hopefully that number is increasing, HTML5 actually provides a better experience. But Angry Birds is a brand that we just can't justify not providing the game to anyone just because they don't have one or the other one. So we said, OK, we are going to support both of them, even if it doubles our production efforts. And then in the end of the day, our fans who want to play the game, want to play Angry Birds on web, they will be able to choose the version which works better for them. And now as we move forward, we are op optimizing our Flash versions so that it will have a better performance. And we are experimenting with the Flash 11 uh, using the stage 3D, which can actually change the game plan for Flash games quite a lot. And in the same time, we are working with the industrial leaders to improve our HTML5 engine, which is actually very exciting for us to uh, have a leading production on that, because like I said, there are not many examples using that technology. And in the end of today, why we do that, like why we want to say like double production, because in the end of the day, the winner will be our fans. They will have the best possible outcome regardless of the solution we choose. At the moment, we have only one live version out there at Chrome Web Store called Angry Birds Chrome. It's free. Even though it's called Angry Birds Chrome, it's actually not only for Chrome. You can play it on Firefox or Internet Explorer 9. And it's developed, it's an HTML5 game developed by using Google Web Toolkit and App Engine which are uh, provided solutions by the Google itself. <clears throat> but from our point of view, we really just see this version as a beginning. This was more like, a, in some ways, maybe technology demo that we just wanted to see how can we do that. So this is not actually what we are aiming for. But we are just getting ready and prepared, and uh, more will be coming out from us in very near future. We won't rush it, but we are quite there. Angry Birds will be on the web, and it will be quite strong. So I will be, like, in that regard, our pre-production pre is ready, and we are now rolling. And we have really big plans. And no need to say the big plans require also uh, lots of competent people. It's very challenging to work with us nowadays. We have lots of tasks, lots of issues that it's really new. Like, we don't necessarily even know how to do it. Maybe no one has done those before, but they are very rewarding. And, uh, and we want to work in an environment where people appreciate that. Like, if you think of that, Rovio, just 12 months ago, Rovio was actually just consisted of tw 20 people. Rovio was number one in the App Store with just 20 people. And now we are 150, like quite a growth. And we are expecting that after 12 months, we will be 300. And I think we will be. If you just look at from our web team, not 12 months ago, but just four months ago, we were just five people. Now we are 10. In two months' time, we will be 20. And by the end of the year, we'll be 40. So we are growing. We have big plans. And we have big ambitions. And it's very exciting times for us at the, nowadays. So Serdar said, so, so Serdar is quite humble because his team has created one of the quite popular games on the web uh, with, like you said, just very few people in the past few months. Uh, the thing is that every initiative we have at the moment does need a lot of people. And, and so, of course, we're, we're looking everywhere. We're looking in Finland and all the towns in Finland. It was really interesting to talk with the guys from Kayani, actually, earlier today. 
uh, an initiative like Angry Birds Magic is going to be probably the same scale as uh, as the web project, for example. And we have several others that we're exploring. So uh, a lot of a lot of fans are asking us, okay, what's coming next for you guys? And of course, we're working on other games. Uh, of course, we're exploring uh, even the possibility of, of other IPs eventually. Um, and we're working on exploring all these things, but the main goal for us is to still grow while maintaining quality. And that's why we can't rush a port to the web. That's why we can't rush ideas out there and push to single uh, every single platform. So I've talked to quite a few people in the hiring effort lately. It's quite interesting. Uh, one of the main feedbacks I've been getting in Finland has been, uh, you know, I'd love to have my own small studio and not join something corporate like you guys. And that, that to me is crazy, of course, because I'm sitting inside there. And seeing that we are not a corporate environment. If, if I look at the competitors that we have, like companies, other large gaming companies that have this kind of reach like Zynga or Capcom, Nintendo, Konami, and people like this, they are companies with thousands of people. We're still at 140 and having significant reach. So for the amount that we are, and the impact that we do, uh, we're very small and nimble still. And that we want to remain. And that's why we're creating smaller teams like this. Um, so that, that argument of us being corporate is pretty interesting. Actually, we are trying to create and we are looking for people who are more on the uh, creative side, let's say, and, and less the cubicle style. Um, so one thing we want to do here is also uh, get smart questions from people. Um, so uh, we're thinking of an incentive. I mean, I'm sure there are questions in the audience, but we'll try to maybe reward the best questions with, uh, what was it, Angry Birds Plus shows we had? Something. And we had down there the uh, real life Angry Bird compo. So like, ah, it's cool, I can see a couple of cheers. <laughs> um, so we're thinking of just using the remaining time for, for Q&A and, and, and just, uh, you know, trying to answer with the best stuff we have. <laughs> so go ahead, please. A blue strap t shirt. <laughs> Sardar, did you hear it? So, what's our next goal? The browser is done. What's it, once the browser is done, what's next? Well, uh, like, like I said, uh, we consider the web as a, one of the bigger technologies that we will be, but in any digital platform, that Angry Birds experience can be brought in, you name it console, web, handheld. Even if you're fridge, if it has a screen and some way to interact with you on TVs, like uh, our like yeah, our target is basically any digital platform which can provide you a good experience. Yeah, fully agree. I mean, uh, it's not so much about um, where the mass is as it is uh, creating a really fun or delightful experience, surprising experience for the fans. Uh, so, the most recent example I think is the cookbook. Uh, that's something no one saw coming, no one, and that's I think that's great. Uh, if you look at, at you know if if someone would suggest the idea of an Angry Birds cookbook, first you know they'd find it pretty weird. Second, they would think that it'd be about making bacon and hot dogs and this kind of things with like killing the pigs, right? And and so, but we just found that the the, the art and the concept of the idea and stuff was totally worth exploring. So, you know, uh, is it a new platform? Is it a new media? Is it a new type of thing? Is it the animation stuff in the publishing, etc.? Basically, it's, it's it's trying to explore that. It's not just a game, but it's the whole IP and the whole brand, basically. Laurie. <laughs> differences between the two. So, I don't know if you heard me, but uh, so how do you handle differences between HTML5 and Flash? Are you basically like trying to provide the same experience with both technologies, or is it going to be two totally different things? Uh, from project point of view, they are in many ways they are different things. Like like I mentioned, uh, much better at the game. <laughs> uh, we have two different development tracks for them since they are uh, by nature they are very different technologies 
But that's, like I said, that's only from the project point of view. From product point of view, from end user point of view, it shouldn't matter. They shouldn't even know what they are using to play. They don't care. What they care is they like the game or they heard about the game and they want to have fun. And that's our priority. As long as we can provide them good user experience, we try to make that actual technology choice transparent for them. But internally, of course, they are very different technologies. And uh, it's from programming point of view especially, we can't really. Uh, they are just separate projects. Yeah, but so, so are you? They st or from the end user's point of view, it's still going to be like the same experience. So you're not going to take advantage of either technologies, like cool things, or. Well, let's say that regardless of the technology we use, HTML5, Flash, or anything, if it's not cool, if it is not high tech, we won't release it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, just to extend on your question, I think uh, if you look at Angry Birds in general, we try to look at, at, again, the experience first, the platform afterwards. And again, if we release on the platform that where the specs are inferior, as long as the Angry Birds gameplay is there and the experience is still there, you know, it's still good. It's just more about like adapting to the specifics of the platform. So for example, on Android, the uh, business model is different than, for example, on iOS, simply because of the specificities of the platform. So in that sense, it's similar with Flash. Uh, German in front. Okay. Uh, do you know the um, we have in Finland we have the movements. Yes. Uh, uh, this the same kind of uh, situation like movements. Uh, if you're looking uh, uh, next uh, next years that uh, do we have a uh, Angry Birds land somewhere in Finland or something like that one. So are we planning to Team have an Angry Birds land? Uh, there are some parts of the office I can't look at. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, um, no such plans. I think. Uh, I think it'd be it'd be super. Uh, I think a lot of people would love to see it, but uh, I think getting there will take time. But that said, it, it'd be great to see such things happen. But, but let's let's say it this way: we just need someone smart to come and tell us how to do it, and I yeah. think we will be happy to talk about that. We shouldn't forget that we are a game company and, and we're learning to get into those things. So for example, we got, was it David Hazel, his name, uh, from uh, Marvel, uh, joined us recently. And I could be totally wrong on the name, so I'm sorry, but comic expert <laughs> recently joined us. And, 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 and there, that's very, very helpful. So same thing with those kind of experiences. Okay. <laughs> I'd like it would be very is interesting. It Sorry? Is it true? I have no idea. <laughs> Thanks. So uh have two questions. You have two. You only get one bird, I'm sorry though. <laughs> Can you give the peak also for me? Um <laughs> uh, well the first one is like uh, the touch based game mechanics is the, the key. Okay, the touch-based game mechanics is the key for this one. And uh, how do you how do you do it in the the browser-based games? Like use the mouse, and uh, is that a similar experience? Or <coughs> yeah, of course. One of the strengths of the game is the the slingshot mechanics, and that fits really nicely with the touch screen. That's why we actually have the slingshot there because it just feels so natural. On our current version on Angry Birds Chrome, we are using mouse, and we try to make this intuitive as possible. And we actually received quite good feedback so far. That actually works straightforward, and people are not having trouble to use it. But uh, the other alternative will be to get rid of the slingshot completely and try to do something which maybe works better with mouse. But this for now, we try to see, can we still use a slingshot? And uh, as long as it works. And like I said, so far, we got good feedback. We will keep it as it is. Well, so one what? aspect you uh, underline, I think that's that's very important in Angry Birds, is that if on the touch screen, if you know how to unlock your screen, you know how to play the game, basically, right? That's the only interaction you need. Uh, it's true that translating that to another device is not easy, but um, again, it's just a lot of testing. Web team is doing that. <laughs> All right, thanks. Well, why don't you consider the silver light? Like, why do you consider only the HTML5 and Flash? But uh, why uh, not silver light? Uh, is there any reason you drop it out or? 
Uh, to be honest, we talked about that, but it didn't raise so much. It's on the table, but it's not on the priority list at the moment. Uh, let's put it this way, it was maybe more about resourcing as well, like like I said, uh, we are growing fast and we start with the priorities, but again, if uh, we come to a point that we feel there's a good case using that, we will actually have a good version of the game and there's a, uh, a market for it that actually we can serve it to certain people that we they couldn't reach any better version, I think that will be on our table. Like uh, we don't rule it out, but it's just like not on the on the priority list at the moment. There's quite a few. Lady in the middle. What's our plan for social networks? Things like uh, you guys are doing something on geolocation in future. Just wondering what's the plan for social network. You want to pick that one up? So the social network. <coughs> uh, well, since it's not out there, I can tell you everything. And to be honest, we don't yet know everything. We are working on it. And because it's not out, because we feel that we can still improve it. But uh, we try to, on very high level, we want to have an Angry Birds community where uh, you can actually spend time in our, our, in our domain area. And it's not just about uh, shooting pics anymore, but there will be other reasons why you should be there. And that's how we approach it on high level. And uh, it's a quite an aggressive, and to be honest, that particular project is the biggest project ever Rovio has been taking from games development point of view. Mm -hmm. And that will be only out when we feel like, okay, that's it. Because that's one project where we can go wrong easily if we don't do it the right way. And our expectation levels are very high, and we are working on it quite uh, heavily. But yeah, the high level goal is we want to have a community where you can be around Angry Birds brand and Angry Birds feature, but it's not just about shooting birds anymore. You want to be there, you want to interact with your friends there, and you will have your own uh, player profile, player progress. I think that can give you some idea what it might look like. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, um, you got a lot of venture capital lately. Uh, you're growing fast. You are still a game company. Um, I was wondering, how much interest do you have to develop a new IP besides Angry Birds? I think you have your hands full, but I think it could be important to have a second leg to, to stand on, which is nearly successful as Angry Birds. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Okay. Thanks. I guess I'll pick that one up. Uh, for up? second IP, from development point of view, we would love to. 90% of our studio, they would like to work on a second IP. But let's again put it straight that Angry Birds itself brings us so many opportunities that we just can't even address all of them at the moment. Exactly. Like, I, like we just briefly answered a while ago, we have certain things that we want to try and we just can't give enough attention on them because just we don't have enough people yet to do it. And as f if, despite we grow very fast. And the second type is also having the same issue at the moment that yes, we want to work on it. And we believe we have the competence to build up a second IP and Angry Birds will drive a great traffic for that. But it's just like mm -hmm. we want to do it when we are ready and well prepared for it and we can invest enough. And that's mostly about when we talk about investment nowadays. It's not necessarily the money issue, but it's just about, about having the right amount of people and right type of people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, maybe back to the origin of your question, most of that money we got, we are not going to uh, put it in the Swiss banks. We want to bring it back to the industry. We want to invest back to game development. But uh, it just requires us to grow even faster than we are doing at the moment. Uh, and, and one thing also about uh, you know, expanding or new IP or expanding the IP discussion. Uh, if you look at something like Mario, for example, you know, what is Mario? Is it the tennis game? Is it the uh, Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart and Mario Paint? And, uh, you know, I, I mean, there's, uh, there's so much room. I think the, the, the world of Angry Birds is so rich. You know, we've only explored some angles. You know, some of it with the cartoons, some of it with the classic seasons in Rio, but so much more we could do that could be still within the same universe, but different. So. 
Hi, my name is. Hi, I'm Olli, and I want to ask about what kind of people are you going to get to your to Rovio? Which kind of people we're looking for? Yeah, uh, we are looking for on very high level. We are looking for good people, people that we actually want to sit next to them. That's for like the first criteria for us, like. Uh, and then the attitude and motivation follows that. And if you ask about, okay, what kind of skills, competencies it's required, it's actually, we don't have like one particular position. Like mm -hmm. you can be, if you're a technical person, pretty much any technical background, more or less available out there, most of them are relevant to us nowadays. We are, uh, of course, have, uh, bringing in people with artistic backgrounds, designers. On the, uh, we are bringing in producers, we are bringing in on, uh, quality assurance people. And this is just for the game section. Basically, nowadays the company expanded so much that there are, I don't think there are many professions left out there that Rovio is actually not looking for. And uh, the That's last true. time I checked our website, it was saying that we are hiring 40 open positions. And actually, that's not even having the full list there, like what we are looking for. So, uh, but again, back to the games. Since we are expanding on every platform which makes sense to us, any technical background is more or less valid for, uh, for us at the moment that we will be. Of course, then it depends like which team you will land up, but uh, there's no particular area that we are looking. We are open for people on all areas. OK, thanks. Uh, one, one point to, to, to add to this. Uh, the, th there's the emphasis I, I really want to put on on the difference of, of experience, which is perfectly fine. We are looking for people at the trainee and internship level, people who are going to do their thesis, people who uh, are eager to learn as long as they are you know, eager and smart and talented. And that's perfectly fine. And, and very often, these people are more interesting to work with than people who've been locked in the industry for you know, 15 plus years or something. So, so really, at, at any level, and, and, and any skill. And, and just to give you one example, and that's just like one slice, tiny slice of, of where we're looking, but if you're an artist, you can work on, on 2D, on 3D, on animation, on character graphics, on backgrounds, on, on like anything, basically. And that's the same thing for the, all the other aspects of the company. So, so yeah, good people. <laughs> any other question? Hi. Okay. So on the subject of uh, animation. That's for the good question. Of, well, no, I can't throw oh. that far, so <laughs> if you can pass it there. <laughs> Hi, so on the subject of animation, how are, uh, how are you going to um, approach the uh, making like animations 3D like Rio or like, and how are you going to like create the world being that it's being like a game uh, for now? And uh, so, yeah like the stories and the like 2D or 3D. So what are your plans? Um, that's a good question. And uh, it's one of those questions, unfortunately, we can't answer. First of all, it has to be a surprise when it's out. Second of all, I think half of those are not even answered internally yet. Like we are putting all different options on table level, evaluating which one is better. But uh, Hopefully, uh, once it's ready, it will be good and it will be a good surprise and it will uh, meet the expectations of people. But uh, again, unfortunately, we can't know exactly how it will be now and we can't reveal that. Can take one more or two questions still and that's it. There it is. In the back. Oh, yeah, sorry, I can't do that. There's the light in the way, so I can't see you. So can you say that louder? Because you don't have the mic, so. If you just say, I'll repeat it, it's fine. Do we have plans for multiplayer? Again, so, I, so, so we have a, a prototype team whose job is to prototype so many ideas and, and, and to explore whatever is out there and to see what would be great. Now, uh, you know, ideas with, for example, do we want to do 3D? Do we want to do some other tech? Do we want to do, you know, NFC is one of them. That's like, okay, made it through. Uh, now, 
the question is more, what are the things where we can create a really awesome experience for fans? And until it's not there, there's no point in releasing a version one that's like, eh, you know, <coughs> like we'll have to improve it and maintain it and all that. So, so uh, are we are we looking at different angles for gameplay? And does it make sense for for the game to be more social? Well, the answer is that guy. Yes, definitely. Uh, but are we making specifically a multiplayer version of Angry Birds? Can you know? <laughs> I think it will be expand? there when we have nothing better to do. But uh, at the moment, we feel like maybe we have a couple other ideas that we want to implement first before we get there. But uh, obviously, multiplayer may bring lots of nice, cool elements. And we are, uh, let, let me put it that way. You are not the first one who suggested should we have a multiplayer game. And it's on our, it's on our uh, table. Yep. You, the yellow t-shirt. More about magic, OK. Um, what would you like to know? Um, the part where you can meet people. Ah. Uh, how does that work? Are you able to play a game? Yes, OK, so uh, like I said, we're not looking so much in, in terms of technology, of, of how should people connect or anything like that, uh, but more about the experience. So, so one thing we're doing now, for example, on the Nokia C7. Uh, Nokia C7 is one of the first phones on the market with, a, with NFC in the phone. And, and so we thought that having the interaction, for example, of, of two people, two friends who meet together and they can high five their phones together and get levels for free, you know, that, that interaction of like you meet someone and you meet and you, you bump your phone with them and you're like, you both get something really cool. That's pretty nice. So uh, levels are not the end game there. It's much more of like, what else can we do with people that would be really great? And what technologies would enable that? So uh, first step is this. Basically, and and, and uh, with social is uh, again uh, it's linked to different questions out there of, of what we want to do there. But uh, it's let's say it's very interesting making it uh, not necessarily a multiplayer game, but a more social experience. With that, there is a question in the back. Yep. Uh, I was just wondering uh, uh, after you have published that web version of Angry Birds. Do you have plans of making software, software for computers that you can buy and say, share, for example, uh, through Steam? Buy and share through what? Uh, you can uh, buy that software to your computer and share, for example, Steam Society or something like that. OK, uh, share. Uh, so, 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 are we planning to put it on Steam? Is that what you mean? Or okay, are we planning to put the PC game, for example, on Steam and, uh, and distribute it through there? Uh, uh, I think our publishing team is work is uh, evaluating that opportunity. To be honest, I don't know exactly where we are on that, but uh, there were talks about that. So uh, it may happen quite soon, or maybe there's something which we mm -hmm. are not ready to do it yet, but. Unfortunately, I'm, we are not the right maybe person to answer that. Um, I, I think uh, so. We do have a, a PC version that's uh, early, uh, but it's coming, and, and, and we're going to push more there. Uh, but then the, the, the question is more like, when do we want to crank it up, and, and, and when can we focus on it more? So uh, Steam is an awesome platform. Uh, I'm on every day. Like CS fan, so. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so you know, uh, probably makes sense to push on a platform that has uh, you know 30 million active users, but uh, it will take time. But also, just I want to add it up on that. Actually, there is an Angry Birds PC version available, which can be purchased from Rovio Store at the moment. AngryBirds.com. So uh, when that will appear in other digital stores like Steam or so, uh, I think that's something our publishing team is working on. Well, actually, one thing we can do is, since you guys are here, uh, we have uh, free uh, discount codes, uh, free free codes actually, for the uh, Rio version of PC. So if you come by our stand, we'll give you a free card to like download the game, and you can have a PC version. Um, any other question? That's the cameraman. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. No worries. You already had a toy though. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
all like these and, and uh, bird flying and stuff like that. Do you have any experience on using like the motion sensor? Uh, te um. Technically, we do have experience using the motion sensor API. I don't know myself, was it tested on Angry Birds? If it wasn't, I can tell our guys, hey, try it. But I would doubt that they didn't try it. Probably they tried it, and probably they f felt like it just doesn't work quite right, my guess. Mm. So uh, we, have, we have a prototype team. <laughs> and they do their job. And uh, we've had previous games, uh, Mika, you can nod if that's correct, but like we've had previous games such as like the Bones Bo Bo Boeing Battle that did have some motion work, right? So, uh, so there's definitely knowledge there and interest in the team, I guess. Uh, that said, uh, we don't release anything until, or unless it's super, super good. Now, like I said before, like you can play Angry Birds, like we've seen babies playing Angry Birds because they can do eh, right? And, and, and being precise and knowing how to aim with an accelerometer, I, I personally, I would think that would be difficult. So again, like in Korea, an awesome experience around that. So yeah. Like uh, I have myself hundreds of games on my iPhone, and I find only two of them somewhat playable with the accelerometer. I think it's actually very difficult to make a good game control mechanism with that, in my opinion. It works for some people, I know, but it's not cordial enough for most of the titles. And Angry Birds must be accessible, playable by everyone. Like, uh, we have some really super cool ideas, let's say, but we know that it doesn't apply to most of our users. They won't get it, they won't be able to enjoy it the way we want it. So that actually, when you have a, this kind of big title, when you reach millions of people, you have to uh, think twice before you integrate the cool ideas in, let's put it that way. It, uh, but it's part of the challenge, and, and still, if you can bring in these things and they add value, then you know that you did something really good. And that's how we try to take it. All right. Well, if that's all, uh, happy you pick it up also at our stand. We'll still have the stand. You can uh, come play the real life Angry Birds that we had. I don't know if you tried it down there. And have more plush toys. We didn't, didn't, couldn't bring it off here. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, and also for taking time for the demo compo earlier. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for listening.